everyone, and welcome to the Drum Club podcast, powered by Collision Drumsticks, the number one drumming podcast, guys, giving you everything and an all-access pass to conversations on topics that range from drumming, mindset, entrepreneurship, the music business as a whole, and just generally everything music. You know, we want to bring you exciting discussions, you know, featuring independent and signed artists, speakers, touring and award-winning musicians, and of course, industry experts as well for you and your enjoyment. So be sure to hit the subscribe button, keep up to date with new videos, announcements, and exclusive Drum Club content. And don't forget to like and comment below your thoughts about today's conversation. This week on the Drum Club podcast, we are kindly joined by our, by our very own uh, Collision team member, Andrew Conroy, who is both a full-time Collision team member here at Collision and is also a part of our artist experience team. So as well as this, uh, man of many talents, Andrew is both a successful gig and drummer and a producer as well, based in Port Leash, Ireland as well. And you can find Andrew on Instagram at Andrew Conroy Drums. But uh, welcome to the Drum Club, Andrew. How are you today? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I know we already shot uh, an episode, but obviously, for some reason, the software let us down. But, you know, every time I uh, have a chance to sit down with you, you know, it's always, always a blessing. And I think that's one thing I wanted to speak to before we dived in, you know, really keep it conversational today is you're a member of our team. So this isn't just a moment in time. This isn't just one podcast. I feel like we're going to have you back on time and time again. But what I wanted to do today, and I think what's going to be really authentic and really help the, the viewers and the artists at home is, you know, allowing us to, to learn a little bit more about Andy, you know, and maybe starting there is going to be the, the best thing. You know, who is Andrew Conroy? You know, I know I've mentioned a bit of an intro there, but can you just share a little bit more about how you got started musically, you know, and obviously a brief background into how you got started as a drummer? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So basically my story started whenever I was really in first year in secondary school. So um they had like lessons for the first year students who had just come into the school. So you could choose between like drama, arts, um, you could do a language or music. So um, it just came around that I was always into music. I wanted to be a guitarist growing up, uh, you know, I wanted to be a front man. But um, after a few lessons with guitar, it didn't really, you know, suit me. It didn't really go down that well. So um, for me then, you know, I sat behind the kit and, you know, it was really, really good. I just, you know, basic two, four beat and, Really from there, I think I just started getting lessons and it really progressed quickly from there. You know, I started getting into youth bands with some of my friends and, you know, we've played some of the biggest gigs I've ever played, you know, to, you know, a couple of thousand people um, with festivals and stuff like that. So a lot came out of that and obviously to where I am today, where, you know, I'm gigging, you know, all year round with the jury and doing session work and, you know, obviously then a team member of Collision, like you said as well. 110 percent no i think that's really really exciting and the fact that you started at secondary school as well i think it's really interesting because you hear of you know this this tale of two halves you know you have those artists that start coming out the womb playing the drums and then you have those other artists that kind of pick it up later in life i feel like you're some, somewhere in the middle and obviously you and me you know very much have a similar story you know it's starting at kind of secondary school just as we kind of getting into in, for, you know leaving primary into secondary do you, do you think, Andy, you know, there's a there's a real debate, you know, that goes on between drummers. Is it a, you know, born skill or is it a skill that gets, you know, developed? Obviously, you know, of course, over time. But what's your take on that when it comes to it? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, for me personally, I think whenever I started out, it came really naturally to me. So that that's kind of why I think that maybe drummers are born to be drummers. You know, you have to have that rhythm. But at the same time, I feel that maybe, you know, it, it takes a lot of tolerance and patience as well. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's kind of where, you know, kind of people's mindset changes as well. If you have that willpower, that's where you'll start to go further. 100%. And, you know, this is something that we obviously talk about at length, whether it's obviously artist development, because I know you have such a great hand and, and responsibility within that, within the Collision brand. You know, you as an artist, you know, you certainly, you know, practice what you preach. How important has, you know, education, having a, a you know, help in hand, having, you know, individuals in your life who, you know, show you the way and walk with you through your drumming journey, Andy, how, how important and impactful has that been on your music and your career? 
Oh, it's been so incredibly important. You know, um, like I mentioned, whenever I got lessons, um, I got uh, lessons from a guy called Alan Ryan. And unfortunately, he he passed um, not too long ago. But um, for me, his legacy, I basically took over for him and he was the, the drummer in the jury. So, you know, for me, he always joked, you know, someday you'll fill in for me with the jury. And I remember being like 10 or 11 and he was saying that to me and I was like, nah, no, nah, that's not going to happen. And then I remember getting a phone call from him one Saturday and he was like, I'm stuck for a drummer. Can you actually fill in? And I was like, yeah, no problem at all. And I remember asking him, what's the set list? And he hung up. There was no set list. It was just off the cuff, you know, playing with the the jury. So, um, you know, for me, stuff like that has been really important, but also, you know, being around the right people as well, like being around the right band members, but also like minded drummers like yourself, you know, you and me gel really well, you know, within the brand itself, but also we're very like minded. So I think that's why, you know, the, the brand as a whole with the drummers that we have on the roster just, you know, is really, really perfect. 100, 110%, you know, I completely agree as well. You've got to have that You've got to have that synergy, that mirrored match. You know, you've got to find people who, and you know, that that's important when we sit down and obviously build our criteria for who we want to work with, choose to work with, you know, as part of this wonderful family. It's like the best job in the world, isn't it? We're going to, we're going to get to it. You know, waking up every day, being able to obviously define your life, define the lives of others, help support, you know, drummers around the world. It's, it really is a blessing. But, you know, the fact that you're taking these skills, these, you know, moments, you know, in time, right, with, with Alan and, and you know, and, and this legacy that he had, you know, so incredibly developed and, and set up, not just for yourself, but obviously for, for the fans he's touched, for the bands he's touched and for the students he's taught. You know, what was one, you know, apart from obviously what you shared, what was one kind of lasting piece of advice Alan gave you that, you know, has always stuck with you, you, you always, le- you know, lean on, lent on, you know, in times of crises or, or whenever you needed to? Um, I think for me, one of the lasting things was don't take it too seriously. He, especially whenever it came to obviously the band itself. Um, I think when you stop enjoying something, that's when you need to reevaluate where you are and why you're doing it. So for me, you know, I take every gig, even our worst gig. And, you know, there's been times where I've been like, you know, I don't want to play this venue or, you know, I don't want to do this. But at the end of the day, I think as well with with the whole pandemic it really taught us that you know even the worst can you know have a a certain impact as well so um for me it's just you know take every day as it comes but also you know once you stop enjoying it you know you need to reevaluate where you are and you need to figure out what needs to change yeah yeah definitely and obviously on on the regular how how often are you kind of reassessing that you know, were you reassessing it more at the start when you when you first got started as a drummer? Because obviously, you know, secondary school and, you know, for those drummers abroad, you know, kind of between the ages of, I would want to say, kind of 13 and, and 18, really, Andy, yeah. if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Ireland as well. And, you know, like, that's a really pivotal, you know, block of time right that that's that's your formative years where you know you, you know it makes or breaks a hobby you know an interest can change on a dime you know how you know how was that for you you know w- w- was drumming ever challenged in that time you know between other hobbies family commitments things like that if so how did you make sure drumming pursued and you know rose through yeah absolutely so yeah like you said those years were very um challenging i suppose um, I come from a background where I, whenever I was younger, I was always into sports. So um, whenever over here in Ireland, we have hurling and Gaelic football. So, um, you know, whenever I was growing up from a very young age, like three, four, I played directly up until I was in secondary school and I stayed playing through secondary school. But I think it was when I got to the end of secondary school where I was kind of making my choice where I wanted to go for college. Um, I actually wanted to be a mechanical engineer. And I got my place in college and, you know, that that's what I wanted to do. But I think I had hit a point in my life where I didn't know whether I wanted to be an engineer or full time music. So I ended up going back and repeating my final year in school. And I kind of made that conscious decision that, you know, engineering wasn't for me, that, you know, music was where I wanted to be. So, again, another crossroads that I came to there was, is it going to be full-time drumming or is it going to be, you know, a different aspect of the music industry? And 
I auditioned for BIM in Dublin, got the, the spot in the college, but at the end of it, I think I was unsure of that path, whether I was going to make it as a full-time drummer. So I also loved sound and I loved engineering. So I decided to go for the path of sound engineering and music production. And I think that's really molded me as a drummer as well, because I can see from a producer perspective, you know, what way drums should sound, but also, you know, how to, I suppose, create a phenomenal piece of music and, you know, that drums are not just for timekeeping, they're an actual, you know, rhythm section, but they're also melodic as well. So I think it's given me some cool perspectives. We're, we're certainly spoiled, aren't we, when it comes to drumming and seeing, you know, the art through so many different lenses. And I think, you know, one thing is the capacity to be able to see through different lenses, you know, from a production capacity, from a, obviously plan standpoint, from a, you know, industry standpoint is we're working kind of more holistically within the industry. But to be able to isolate that and to be able to do it is, is something else, you know. And, you know, you talked about kind of pushback. And, you know, you talked about obviously the fact that you were able to pivot and ins- and this is something that we discuss with our clients and artists around the world at length, isn't it? This notion Absolutely. and idea to, to make sure you're pivoting rather than pausing, but also, you know, understanding that there are pressures outside of your music. When you spoke about obviously that, that friction that you were having with the drumming and obviously what kind of caused you to change a little bit. And obviously, you know, you, you were talking about your sports, you know, you know, true athlete, you know. How much of that, Andy, was outside factors in terms of pressure, or, you know, from the community, you know, pressure from, you know, the comparison, pressure from the fear of failing, you know, is, is that always creeped in? Has that been there? Has that not been there? Has it been more in your life at times than others? Kind of what's your relationship with kind of challenge adversity in that capacity? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I definitely feel like I... It was more in the earlier years than now, because I think I've established myself more as a musician. And I think a lot of people understand where I want to go with my career now. You know, I think the biggest step for me, just obviously fast forwarding was, you know, the move to collision full time. You know, that that's where, you know, people were able to see that I was taking it seriously, that this wasn't just a hobby for me. And, you know, again, going back to my earlier days, um, I think music has always been with me and I think you know a lot of people assumed that I was going to go down that route anyway and so I I feel that like especially family members they've always been supportive but I think whenever it came to sports um, and obviously whenever it came to mechanical engineering um, you know they were classed as you know steady jobs mechanical engineering you know so um, I think that's where the pushback came But at the end of it, you know, I knew where I wanted to go and I had a game plan in place of what I wanted to do. So, you know, at at the end of the day, as long as I knew where I wanted to go, I think people will eventually come around to that idea and, you know, they'll understand. I I completely agree. And I think that's one, you know, takeaway that I want artists at home, you know, listening, watching, wherever you're streaming this podcast, you know, to, to take away and part with is, you know, having a game plan. You know, what made you know, up that game plan, Andy, was it kind of a three-year vision, a five-year vision, a year vision? Did you have goals? Was it smart targets? How, how did you approach that game plan to make sure that actually, you know, it's it's not so much proving it to others, but it's proving it to myself that I've got this, I can handle this, and I'm going to go get the goals that I really want to reach and hit out on. Absolutely. So I think it was a mixture between goals and, you know, it, it was definitely targets that I wanted to hit because, I, I was in youth bands, as I'd mentioned, and, you know, we were gigging, we were making music, we were recording music, but at the end of the day, the, I suppose the, the dirty the dirty word in the industry, money, you know, the, there was no, no fees coming in for us playing, you know, two hour sets for us doing festivals. So, you know, at that point in my life, I had to weigh up, am I going to stay with these bands or am I going to pursue, you know, the cover band scene or the wedding band scene? And that, that's where, you know, I started to hit my targets, where I was starting to make, you know, some money gigging. I was able to plan out that I had gigs and, you know, from that more gigs lined up, different bands lined up. So again, for me, it was like, I have to reach a certain, like every year I have a certain amount of gigs that I want to target. 
And, you know, especially now that we're, we're back doing a full time, I, I have what I want in mind every year and I have that target. So, you know, this year and next year, we're already setting targets and, you know, smashing them. So um, for me, it's just, you know, as long as I have goals and targets in place, that that's where I, I go from. Uh, I love this conversation. I love interviewing, you know, great drummers like you, Andy, because I can ask very little and, you know, you do most of the talking, which is which is great. But, you know, that that's what I want. You know, the, the fact that you're able to say, hey, I've, I've got the game plan. I've got targets. I've got goals in my life. Staying with me, walking with me through this journey. And you can always return to those goals. You know, you, you start to pivot away from them. Adversity creeps in. Challenge creeps in. Look, we've got so many things coming at us as drummers. You know, we always say internally at Collision, you know, we're the CEO of our, our music. And a lot of drummers, you know, a lot of team members, when you first mentioned that, is CEO of our music, the chief everything officer, guys. You know, we literally are trying to do it all, be everything to everyone, to family, to friends, to obviously bandmates as well within that. And it can be a bit overwhelming at times, if not hits a boiling point. And before that even gets to that point, we want to make sure you take a moment of, you know, reflection, take a moment to actually reevaluate, you know, do a bit of a systems check, you know, figure out where the balance needs to be stricken. And obviously, you know, return back to those goals, orientate yourself towards targets. You know, the fact that you have mentioned that. I mean, you know, when it when it comes to when there's so many questions I have for you, Andy, it's great. And well, this is why we have to do so many, because you know, Absolutely. I have so many, which is which is great. When it came to you know the jury, you know, fa- fast forward outside of you know, and I know you've obviously covered a lot of ground. I want to kind of scale it back from being full time with us back to kind of um the ju- jury days, and obviously I know you're still with them. You know, when it came to obviously feeling challenged, you know, I can imagine at the start it was an incredible, you know, up up arc kind of uh, pivot and up arc kind of uh, graph. You know, that bar chart's going off the page because you literally need to be bringing yourself to speed to those guys. How important has it been to always feel challenged within the band as well to make sure that you're always, you know, thinking ahead, keeping, you know, really, you know, competitive within the industry in a way that's healthy? but also in a way that keeps you excited as well. So that you as a drummer don't go, Hey, I'm looking at three other bands. I'm thinking about leaving. Absolutely. That that's a really, really good question. And it's one that I suppose I've more recently thought about. And, you know, I think for me, you know, having the, the healthy challenge of, you know, pushing yourself, I think, you know, when it comes, especially to the cover band scene, I feel like a lot of bands, you could copy their set list so easily because, you know, everybody does the generic, you know, Mr. Brightside to, you know, all those really cheesy, great songs. But um, I think that, you know, thinking a little bit outside the box and, you know, I think one thing that the jury brings that a lot of other bands don't bring is the fact that we call our singer the human jukebox. So basically we don't have a set list on a, on a gig night. We basically feed off the crowd. So our singer will turn around and say, right, this song will go down well and we'll do that song. So I think that differs from a lot of other bands where you can literally predict their whole set list. And I I think that keeps us fresh in a way as well, because we do a lot of older set songs, but we also, you know, we do a lot of up to date songs as well, um, which kind of, you know, you don't get a lot of, you get generally just chart music. Whereas we bring it back to the 70s, 80s, 90s, the early 2000s and up to obviously the music that's in the charts today. So I I think that's kind of it. But also, you know, when it comes to the band itself, I think the fact that we're all friends, I think that's where the the healthy challenge comes in as well, because we're friends first, bandmates second. And, you know, we enjoy coming to gigs. So I think once that stops happening again, that's where there's going to be a shift in the band. But um, at the moment, you know, the band has been going over 30 years, so I can't see that happening anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, you know, legacy relationships is, again, you know, really important to to seek out, look for. I know, you know, within my, you know, gigging experience and and days with the bands and, you know, every relationship, every band's success was defined by the relationships within that project. You know, what I found was the stronger relationship you had with the the singer, the guitarist, the bassist, the whole members of the team, the better the sound was, right? Because you gelled more. Do you feel it and, you know, do you kind of align with that philosophy as well, Andrew, kind of the more you you lean into, you know, different artists, the more that the music leans back into you and obviously, you know, supports you and comes back tenfold. 
Absolutely. No, definitely agree. I think, you know, for us, we've gotten so tight over the, the last number of months and the last number of years. And it's because we're all just in tune with each other and we're all just, you know, at the end of the day, the band is for fun, you know, and we, we want to make that a fun experience. So I think that rubs off on the crowd as well. If you're not having fun on stage, the crowd are obviously going to reciprocate that. So I think, you know, when you're energetic, the obviously the audience are as well. And I've been in cases before with bands where you know we show up to practice four or five times a week we do a gig at the weekend but outside of that you don't hear from anybody other than a group chat where you're discussing the set list so you know those bands didn't really work out for me and I I obviously switched from one particular band into the jury because I was the full-time member in one band filling in with the jury but I was also gigging more with the jury part-time than I was full-time with another band so you know you kind of again you have to weigh up your options and you know go with what suits you and what suits your music better yeah totally totally and obviously we talk about the band bands generally every single day of the week you know and, and the jury's obviously for me a you know personal favorite of mine and, and I encourage any artist at home who is yet to see the jury live and no Andrew you stream majority of the shows of course when and where you can wear you know, streaming permits, but, you know, they are a phenomenal party band. And, you know, again, we'll post links below to make sure that, you know, Andy gets the, the support and the recognition he deserves because this band is, is a really exciting band. And it's, it's a band that, as Andy says, has been around 30 plus years. So, you know, Andy, when it comes to obviously, you know, tips, you know, strategies, methodologies, you know, you, you've shared these two polarizing, you know, statements here's the jury. I feel like I'm on jury service the amount of time. I'm, I'm always here in jury. I'm, what, this week? No, <laughs> we're good, uh, which is great. But, you know, I always say, you know, one side of the coin, which is plain sale and perfect, couldn't have a better, more solid relationship with every single member. You know, you're woven into the fabric of one another and that inner rhythm is resonating amongst all. But then you've said like, you know, WhatsApp group and that's about it when it comes to other bands. When it comes to drummers, you know, who were either in that position of just a WhatsApp group or not even having that level of communication outside the project, what, what's some pieces of advice that you can provide those drummers to make sure that you're at least putting in your best effort to, you know, re, re, rejuvenate band relationships, take that relationship at the next level and make sure that the band is just the best sound, the best band that they can possibly be? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing that I would always say to a musician – anybody in general who's in a band is evaluate is this band the right fit for you because at the end of the day if you're not enjoying your music you're not going to perform at your best so you know for me you need to evaluate is this band you know if you're not pulling a crowd if you're not if the musicians aren't into it you know why are you there you know you want to progress in your career so you know go with like-minded musicians the second thing that I would say is you know get the band together if it's something that you're interested in and you can see that there is potential with that band set a band meeting you know just talk it out figure out where each band member wants to be and again that can give a lot of clarity to the bands I know we've discussed with you know artists you know about setting up band meetings in the past and you know it, it's really really helped them along and it's really progressed them in their careers so um personally i think you know setting up band meetings is where where it needs to be and you know just evaluating is this the right move for you if it's not you will always if you're the nicest guy in the world you will find bands that's that's crucial you know you need to be easy to get on with and the other band members need to be easy to get on with because at the end of the day if you don't get on it's not going to you know show well on stage or you know that band's eventually going to fizzle out anyway yeah yeah powerful advice stand by everything you've mentioned definitely echo everything andy as well and you know you've got to find what works for you you know ladies and gents at home you know the inner rhythm is there but you've got to obviously get in and dial into that rhythm when it comes to you, to every aspect of your drum and every aspect of your life, even, you know, there's, there's so many times where, you know, even in hobbies and sports outside interests, when I'm, I'm gelling with family, I'm always thinking, you know, of the next beat of the next song of the next song to go back to the band with and say, Hey, I saw this out. What do you think? Andy, are you doing much of the same? I mean, when it comes to obviously, you know, watch other you know, bands, you know, it's one thing to be an artist, but then it's another thing to actually be involved in the art. How involved are you within the community? And I know as community leader here at Collision, I know as a team member, that's one example of how you are. 
but you know how 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 is that you know in terms of you know making sure that that cup is full also yeah absolutely when it comes to the i suppose the the local music scene here you know i would be very active um you know i'm always again looking like you said at different bands what they're doing what we're doing, what we could improve on to get us to that level. So um, I know, you know, whenever I was over in Newcastle seeing the, the collision team, you know, we we went and saw a, a band and, you know, for me, I brought home a lot of tips and a lot of, I suppose, insight because obviously the UK scene will be similar to the Irish scene. So again, that that's something that I did was just bring that to the table and was like, this is what these bands are doing. This is what we could do and again it progresses us as well but um generally as uh, in the community you know you need to be active all the time and again like we said whenever it comes to the collision community you know it's all about that aspect and all about that you know big family feel so um you know again that only helps artists progress as well yeah 110 percent family's everything and it's funny now your kind of mo your mission has changed as well going from just doing that within the band setting but obviously since being and joining the team now full time you know it's the case of I'm actually out there as well scouting so coming to a, a venue near you guys be sure to be ready because you never truly know who is in the room and you never know what exciting conversations can be had and what we're talking about is obviously the partnerships that I know Andy we've you know shared the stage when it came to going in and discussing deals with artists in the room you know, and where it matters, you know, actually in the venue before they even either take to the stage or walk off the stage for the last part of the set, you know, and I know that you have experienced that firsthand as well, you know, and I think that is important to highlight within this podcast is the start, the origin, the why, and before the opportunity to work with us full time, the opportunity to be involved in the industry full time came around, you started life as a collision endorsed artist. Now, you know, can you just explain a little bit as to kind of that journey that process and also why collision over other brands i think that's really important you know we see all of our competition whatever you want to call it is you know ultimately collaborators we love what everyone's doing in the industry but what was it for you andy you know through the lens you know through the lens and the looking glass of the artist that really stood out for you to say hey i want to put my application in with collision i want to put it on the line and i want to see where it goes from here yeah, absolutely. So I think starting off, um, you know, a mate of mine introduced um, Collision and I hadn't heard of the brand at that point, but I had obviously felt the sticks, tried the sticks. They, I'd always been, you know, different brand player for many, many years. And for me, it was just great to get a new lease of life. It, it felt like an extension of me. And it was it was just really cool. And then I remember a couple of months later, um, you know, Collision reached out through social media, and you know, I was like, okay, this, this could this could be a potential, you know, partnership down the line. So, um, again, it just went from there, and you know, I've never looked back. The product is just outstanding. You know, touch wood, I'm touching my desk here, but I haven't broken a stick yet, and you know, I'm endorsed a long time now, and you know. To, to not have broken a stick that that's what we look for as drummers you know we want something that's durable but we want something that you can rely on um and that was that but whenever it came to the community aspect you know that was what won the brand over for me i saw what other brands were doing i saw what collision was doing and you know it was such an easy decision you know seeing you know what collision do back in say backstage with the artists you know what they I know we have backstage but generally in backstage with the artists and you know I think collision has really evolved a lot of musicians you know you could be on a roster of any you know drum brand any brand in general but it's the customer care it's the the behind the scenes that collision work with you through to obviously level you up as a musician and level you up you know within the industry that's where the two brands differ yeah yeah and i really appreciate you sharing that andy and you know it's it comes back to me for the why because collision was started and founded with you know one person one principle one mission which was to obviously impact the sound as many artists and drummers around the world as absolutely possible you know and for me it's important you know as a drummer like yourself andy coming through the the grind grit you know gritting your teeth cutting your teeth in the smoky clubs pubs bar scene wherever you guys are around the world, you know, up to that next level. And, you know, many drummers really struggle 
able to get to that next level. They don't have the the ticket, the strategy, the the you know that necessarily the drive at times. You know that accountability isn't where it needs to be. You know you're surrounded by people saying no when you need to be surrounded in, in a room with people who are saying yes and you can do it. And you know when it comes to us, you made one thing really clear there, and it was that kind of the artist evolves with the brand, but I also feel the brand evolves with the artist. I mean, Absolutely. you know that through different strategies and you really, you know, you really are in an interesting position because you've seen through both lenses now, you know, uh, you know, a very rare, unique perspective. How has that helped, you know, you as a musician, you know, seeing it through the lens of artist and then also as an in-industry expert and community leader working within the brand full time? Absolutely. It's definitely, you know, evolved me as a musician you know if I look at where I was whenever I started with Collision you know I was only gigging you know once a month whereas like we said Collision helped me evolve as that musician and it pushed me further as well but whenever it comes to obviously looking through the two lenses of artists versus you know within the brand itself um, I think it, it definitely does open your eyes and it does really you know show you the the level of commitment that the brand has for every artist you know it's it's really showing me you know coming through and again dealing with ev- with artists every day you know I'm on the phone I'm saying you know look I I've come through the same channels as you you know this is what collision does and this is how they do better than you know other brands this is how we can support you so um again that that's definitely given you know me two perspectives and two phenomenal uh different attitudes to being an endorsed artist as well I love that, you know, and when it comes to obviously as well, you're someone who truly immersed yourself in every aspect. I mean, looking back, you know, we've struck and built such an incredible relationship, friendship as well. I think it's fair to say, you know, over over the last few years. But, you know, the one thing that always stood out for me when we were growing the partnership, the relationship was your perseverance and actually immersing yourself in as many different opportunities, as many different things that we had put in front of you, you were picking right up. You know, things like backstage, things like the mastermind, that's private one-to-one support within a team, small group environment. You know, you're not getting that level of support anywhere else, you know. And for you, you were like, as soon as the opportunity was shared and presented, you you took it. What what was it that made you take it? You know, what was it about backstage? What was it about mastermind? You could just kind of break that down for us. That For you, you were like, this is the right thing at the right time. And I need that push, you know, it's hard to identify, isn't it, as a drummer, because with so much going on, you you really think you've got it and you have got it until you don't have it. And I think it's having that team in your corner to know, actually, when you don't have it or there's times of adversity, you know where to go. Yeah, absolutely. No, definitely agree. And I I think the reason why I kind of dove into all those different aspects of what Collision had to offer was, I wanted to be full-time in the industry and you know this is something that was going to help me progress I was going to do it you know at the end of the day we always talk within the brand about action takers and you know that for me is is why I did it you know I wanted to be full-time in the industry and you know it just proves that that can happen you know I I worked hard and you know I was in a job where I was working you know full-time within the retail industry and you know again it, it was fine but it's it wasn't where I wanted to be you know at the end of the day I was looking forward to the weekends where I could go gigging or you know I was looking forward to my days off to do production work for clients or you know just being involved within music anywhere I could you know doing drum lessons you know um back in 2020 as well so um for me anything that helped me progress and the fact that you know there's so many experts within collision that that's why I wanted to be involved with it as well you know, one thing you make clear is this huge power and proximity, you know, the fact that, you, you know, you surround yourself with experts, you surround yourself with, you know, a team that's intentional, you know, in what, in, in what they do. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people out there, you know, who, you know, create busy work, you know, maybe, maybe you've done that in the past. Maybe you're someone who's created, you know, I'm going to put my hand up and say, I'm a, I'm a busy worker at times, but it's about, you know, making sure you, you know, the work you're doing, you know, is driving the results home because bottom line is, you know, it's around 80% of what you do leads to 10% of the success you have. The other remaining 20% is actually the 80%, 90% of your success. And it's about repivoting that 
and rebalancing the sheet to be able to actually make sure that you, you work, play, grow, develop in the most effective way possible. So that gives you most time to go back to doing what you want to do. And I know for you, that's playing shows. I know for you, that's being in this industry full time. And I felt like when you stepped into your true self and, you know, I'm going to share this with you and I've never shared this with you before, but I really saw that come through. It was that case of, I am hungry. I am looking to step up. I am ready. And I feel you have to be at a point where you know you're ready to do that because it's all well and good us telling artists, you know, we feel you're ready. We are your champions. You know, you know me and you know the team that we lead. It's, it's, a, it's a team that is going to champion the every artist, the up-and-comers to the international tour of musicians. But for the young drummer who's finding their way, it can be really tough to establish that. You know, when it comes to obviously mental blocks, adversity, how is your kind of system or, you know, relationship with that changed over time? You know, you, you spoke really in depth earlier about, you know, that relationship as a younger drummer coming up. Today, how do we make sure that you are staying focused, staying driven, also managing those challenges that come up and creep up in your life? Because the challenges change, right? New, new level, new devil is what we always say, even within team meetings, right? But how, how, how is that kind of shape defined you as a drummer today in 2022? Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, you know, the bottom line is I'm in the industry full time. This is what I always wanted. So no matter what challenge arises, I for me, the bottom line is I'm always going to be in this industry. So I I just there, there's no way that a challenge is going to affect, you know, where I'm going to go. You know, I'll find a way around it. There's always a way around it. And we always say pivot, don't pause. So, you know, if every challenge that I ever faced you know, if, if I stopped, you know, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be sitting talking to you. I wouldn't be an endorsed artist. I wouldn't be a drummer. You know, it, that that's the simple answer to it. You know, no matter what challenge arises at the end of the day, I'm always going to be in this industry and I'm always going to make it a point that I'm always in this industry. I love that because it's all about, you know, following, you know, your purpose leaning into that gratitude and leaning into that higher vision, that greater purpose for you, which is, you know, to be in the industry full time that has been, you know, woven throughout this conversation, woven throughout your journey, you know, and clearly to the, the folks at home, it's about for you taking that step into, into, you know, again, there's so many doors, Andy, you know, yeah. was that something that surprised you as well? You know, stepping into this industry, how many true ways in there were and, you know, that no way in was the same. Did you feel that? Did you sense that yourself? I mean, Absolutely. kind of what does that look like? Yeah, definitely. I think it really opened my eyes as I was in college. You know, the fact that you could be a sound engineer, you could be a music producer, you could be a session drummer, a live drummer, you could be a booking agent. You know, there's, there's all these different avenues, but all within the music industry, you know, brackets. So um, for me, definitely, you know, there's so many ways in as well. And that's something that I found out in my college years as well, that, um, you know, I did what's called a higher certificate course. So like that, that was like an entry level into an actual college course. So, you know, I did a year there. I did two years then in AIT studying um, business with music and instrument technology. So again, there's always segues in and there's always a way around it. So um, yeah, definitely there, there's always a way around the industry and there's always a way into the industry. Yeah. I'll, again, you know, when it comes to, to this, I think so many drummers on the outside looking in, they think the only way to get in is getting in a band, getting signed, getting an album out and going number one and going, going on tour. And, you know, when, when it comes to it, it's how many people truly get to that position. You know, how many people are actually doing that full time and, you know, out of the 10,000, 100,000 million, you know, it's, it's a smaller percentile not to discredit, or not to say that no one will get there. That's not the case. But what we are suggesting is there are so many more routes in as well. Absolutely. In the meantime, in the interim, whilst you work to that goal, that greater vision, if that's part of your 10-year goal, keep it there, write it down again, make it solidified. But of course, if you want to get in the industry faster, you know there are certain doors, avenues, levers that you can pull to make that a reality. And, and that was one of the reasons why we started the Mastermind Project and program you know, this high intensity, high caliber, private community, this truly inner circle, because we were matching experts with artists who were there, driven, ready to go. 
who had a product, had a service, or had some kind of greater vision in mind to be able to execute on. And you came in with a very interesting, very exciting project and business opportunity that you really wanted to carve out. You know, I think one thing was kind of identifying that at the start, understanding kind of the why as we walked through the, you know, the weeks and, and the months, because it was a six month program. But what did Mastermind do for you in terms of, you know, was it a, was that the final straw for you in terms of going full time? Was that where you said, you know what, it's do or die, where you said, this is what I've needed or something else, Andy? Absolutely. So, you know, for me, I think it was, first of all, it was clarification that what I was doing was the right move um, in terms of obviously going to college and studying what I did to get to where I wanted to be. Um, so first of all, that, that was great clarification for me. But I think it was, um, I wanted, like you said, to be in the industry full time. And I think this was the stepping stone that I needed in order to get me there. I think that, you know, having the clients that I have now and I still have them and I'm still working behind the scenes, you know, with mixes and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I think that was where I knew that I had to be. And, you know, it was either that or, you know, especially around the time that the mastermind came up, you know, I think it was a, a dark time for every musician. And I think for me, I could have sat on the couch for 18 months and, you know, just wait for the gigs to come back or, I could have done the mastermind and, you know, obviously a new venture, something that was going to keep me going while I was waiting for gigs to come back. But also, you know, this was going to be something that was going to be built out long term. This wasn't just a short term, you know, duration of the mastermind. This was going to carry on for months and years to come. You know, legacy partnerships. And you, you're so right. I think many did take that couch potato position or that lent back approach and and you know if that's what those drummers needed that to them could be you know the right move but for us the right move's always been putting pen to paper you know shipping and, and, and carving the iron and the stone and getting out there and, and moving and taking action you know fueling the jet you know going making sure that you're always taking action taking one step in front of the other even if it's you know one thing a week even if it's two things a week if you can get a two you can get a three things a week where you say, hey, these are my non-negotiables, if not for anything else, but by the end of the week, I can take off, box off, say I completed these three tasks, that's progress. And I just want to let that simmer for a minute. That is progress. And, you know, you were someone who just scaled out, you know, whenever we had, you know, ideas, notions, things that we knew as a team had worked for systems and structures, you were implementing it within that production standpoint, that production capacity, and then obviously developing that out to then obviously have that finished product at the end of the six months, which was, you know, this production company fully fledged with clients. I mean, expectations versus reality for a minute. Was that ever on the cards for you coming into Mastermind? You know, when you, you sat down with me and the team and, you know, it's a very different relationship now, of course. And that was only built through the Mastermind and those inner circle challenges, channels and activities as well. Because if if I don't know you, I can't flow you. If I don't know who you are, what you do, what you're about. And it goes it goes for everyone, right? We, we won't be able to provide that support and that level of care. But when it came to that, Andy, yeah, expectations v reality, you know, what was yeah. that feeling like? at the end it was it was so surreal you know I think for me coming into the mastermind and knowing that I had an idea but bringing that idea from just what was in my head or what was on pen and paper to actually you know publishing it and obviously launching that and um, you know it was incredible it was such a great feeling and you know for me expectation wise you know it's hard to know when you're starting out you know how it's going to turn out you know you can plan and plan and plan but it's I think that that's why I did so well was because the planning had you know worked out and obviously I got to the launch stage but you know for me I was like if I get five clients you know I would ace at the start I'll be you know extremely happy that's five new people that I haven't met or even if they are people that I know it's you know it's starting to take traction, but, you know, to overall within, you know, a couple of months have 40 clients, you know, that, that for me was incredible. And to this day, I still have the very first client that I ever, you know, mixed for, I 
still I'm doing work for that artist at the moment. So, you know, for me to, to build those partnerships and relationships, not only within the mastermind with, with the collision team and obviously um, the other artists, but also, you know, building out new clients as well. That that was just incredible for me. It's really great to hear that that relationship is still, you know, going strong. You've still got your very first client, which is really exciting. And, you know, how important, you know, should should you make it known, should we make it known today that legacy partnerships and relationships are the, the currency of, of the industry and the currency of our music industry? It's so important. You know, the, the power of being in the room, the power of communication is just, you know, like you said a few seconds ago, you know, if we don't know who you are, you know, how, how are we going to help support you? And, you know, how are the people going to know what you are, you know, about and who you are, you know? So the, the power of, you know, just bringing, putting yourself out there and really just, you know, focusing on that kind of communication aspect, you know, that's what drove me and that's where I got my clients from, you know, it was a little bit of word of mouth, but it was also me putting myself out there saying, this is the service I have. If you're looking for this, you know, shoot me a message i'll be gladly help i'll gladly help you out and and when it comes to obviously you know that approach and you know that 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 was adopted throughout you know that idea yeah. of, you know of you just saying hey i'm, I'm going for it. i'm taking action I'm, I'm focusing on legacy partnerships and you you successfully and continue to build that not just with us but obviously with clients with fans with it so it's it's practicing those principles as much as it is understanding the principle. And that's maybe something we, we throw out to you guys and challenge you guys to is sit down and think about what legacy relationships have you already established? Cause they will be there. You know, again, it's, it's one of those things and being able to control the narrative online, you were saying, you know, if, if we don't know who you are and you don't take the first step gone or any opportunities of ever, you know, flourishing because that, that first step was never taken. You know, the, the seeds were never scattered or sown and, you know, nothing's going to grow out of that. But if you are the person that activates that partnership, goes out one step at a time, breaking bread with people, sitting down, talking virtually in person, there's no excuse today, Andy, is there? No. And, and when absolutely. it comes to it, you know, you only have to look around and say, how has that person gotten to where they are now? How, how, how on earth did that drummer get to where they are? You know, a lot of drummers do that comparison, right? I don't want you to do it for anything other than to actually reverse engineer it. How many people are a part of their team? You know, it takes a village to raise a drummer. It takes a band to raise a drummer. It takes a lot of people in the process to get a drummer from point A to point B. So make sure that every day, you know, when, when you're at NAM, when you're at these events, when you're on these virtual conversations, when you're in these Facebook groups, or when you just sat online with nothing to do, you're reaching out to 10 people. If you can reach out to 10, you can give 15 a call. If you can get a 15, you're going to give 20 a shout. You know, and get on the phone, start DM and start making those meaningful connections, authentic connections, not spam, not hitting someone up with no aim or no purpose, but seeing where the cross pollination and the cross, you know, support can be provided, you know, going in and doing that and setting up those relationships. And what you'll find is they, they will truly flourish, prosper, however you want to put it. You know, Andy, that, that's one thing that was really key for me is seeing how important and how in high regard and in how such high regard you had collision in mind for doing something with and you kept coming back to the table you know saying hey if there's any ever any opportunity or you know just putting it out there and, and being that first to say it and obviously we were proactive when it came to that because I think when it came to that conversation it was one sooner than you would ever envisaged yeah. to the fact that we were even tabling a conversation you know was just out there how how was that let me put it to you you know what was what was that you know when the opportunity was first presented for you to come and join the team as, a, as an actual team member and staff with us a collision what was that feeling like it was so surreal you know i i remember that that day i was off um from the the previous job that i was in and i remember getting an email um you know can we do a quick meeting and i was like no problem and I remember Chloe, my other half, saying to me, they're going to say to you now that there, there's a job on the table. And I was like, nah, no, nah, not yet. It's too soon. Like, And she was like, no, no, they, they are. That, that's what's going to happen. And then obviously we had the conversation and that was brought to the table. And for me, you know, it was the fact that I had loved the brand for so long as well 
that you know obviously coming from the artist's perspective like coming into the actual brand itself you know that was just absolutely crazy and what was the first day like you know when you could say you were truly full-time in industry you know what what were you feeling what was that experience like if you could break it down a little bit for everyone at home because you know it's 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 a real you've arrived feeling (laughs) absolutely no that that is so true you know it was I remember waking up that first morning and it was the first morning I think ever that I had a job where I wasn't dreading it you know that I was like I've I'm actually doing something that I love and you know with the brand that I love as well which is great and you know merging the two the two together was just like there, there's no feeling like it and you know it, it is true what they say you know if you love your job you'll never work a day in your life but you know it, it's just the fact that I'm a drummer working for you know the drumstick brand you know it, it's incredible like so just that first day alone was just there, there's no way to describe it it was just great like it was just really humbling to know as well that obviously you know the, the brand trusted me to obviously come in to the the brand and obviously help out and you know be a part of the journey with with the the company yeah and you you truly are an asset of the team I do want to you know share that you know with you even in this format as you know I do you know a lot you know because it's the people that build this brand it's you know and and we never forget that I always make sure we wake up reminding ourselves of how we got here and it was you know through the the five plus half a decade plus amount of time just grinding one bite at a time and you know all of this didn't happen overnight you know to those watching to those listening let that be the inspiration I was seven days a week you know 18 hours 16 hour days on my own trying to build this out running around the town trying to make and pick up as many phone calls as possible trying to you know set up as many conversations to hopefully lead to some results and you know, that had to happen not just for one year, two years, but I felt almost three years before there was any level of traction there. And, you know, before we really started to get that motion in place. And, you know, we're at a point now where we are turning up the ante. You know, we are working on some really exciting things behind the you know stage. And for you, Andy, to be a part of that conversation, how, how does that make you feel as well to get your teeth into new products, community efforts and endeavors that really give back to the artists at home? You know, how, how does that sit with you as someone who was just, all for community somebody who's pro community 110 percent. it's it's absolutely fantastic it's such a great feeling and you know for me i love getting on calls with drummers you know i love getting to know the different aspects of you know a drummer's career you know i speak to drummers who are you know the, the bedroom drummers who are you know just creating youtube videos to obviously drummers who are touring nationally you know regionally internationally as well so you know, it's great to hear people's stories, you know, no drummer is the same and no, no person is the same. So it's always great to get a unique perspective on each, each individual. So for me, that's just great. And obviously when it comes to the product size, you know, getting to, to be a part of that side as well is, is really cool and getting to see, you know, how they're produced to obviously the scaling it out to obviously tailor for each drummer as well which is really cool it's, it's great to see you know the new product lines the just the, the new products in general yeah we're well, like kids in candy shops <laughs> yeah <laughs> you get you get the new batch and i know we're testing a few things behind the scenes and i know we've got a few things heading your way as well to, to trial and get involved with and i think that's really exciting for me as you know ceo and owner of the the, the team you know and again it's a team effort you know it's a you know when it comes to this it's you know, we are all equals. I think that's hopefully what is always conveyed. And, you know, again, everyone's, you know, the same. We are one and the same. And I want to make it known that everyone has a voice. Everyone has that ability to say, hey, I've got an idea. Let's table it. Let's discuss it. Let's execute on it. You know, when it comes to, you know, I always I always find this interesting because I've sat in every seat, you know, that we have a collision from fulfillment to sales to sitting on the team with the artist roster. And, you know, you know that I'm still very much, involved actively in that Absolutely. how important is it to have you know a team that that is all, all all fired up all you know cylinders blazed in all of those different categories because you know if we went round table and we could sit and make this a three four hour tripod you know if we really wanted to talking about you know brands which are great with people product process but what's it like to be in a brand where we're really driven and focused on those three tiers exclusively product people process 
it's so important. You know, I, I think if the ball gets dropped in any one of those three categories, you know, you're after, you know, the way I can describe it is you're going to be left behind. So, you know, you have to be on the ball all the time. And I think because we are, you know, especially, you know, myself and yourself are in the, the drum industry, uh, like as musicians, I feel like we are fired up because we know what we want, but also what we wanted when we started as well. So I think knowing that, you know, we're going to better serve artists, you know, in any sort of uh, capacity, I think, you know, we're, we're on to a winner straight away. So um, as long as we're serving the artists, we're producing great products. And obviously, you know, behind the scenes, we're a working machine, you know, we're a well-oiled machine, you know, it, it's a phenomenal brand. And it's, it's something like we talk about, the legacy is always going to be there. Yeah, yeah definitely. I always want to, you know, give the artists a bit of a behind the scenes into that aspect of you know the brand because again nothing's off the table i want you guys knowing exactly who we are what we do how we support our drummers and you know i want i want you to share your thoughts as well on that and you know when it comes to obviously your psychology after speaking to the thousands of artists that you have so far when it comes to those artists that have strong applications you know speaking to a little bit about the endorsement program now you know it's it's open to artists of all caliber you know, I think there's a stigma around, you know, if I'm if I'm not signed or I'm not working with Warner Universe, all these big brands, then who who am I? You know, I, I'm just a mere drummer. No, you guys matter. And for me and the team, it's always been about holding that door open and giving as many drummers the opportunity to get in this industry as possible. And for us to hold that door open as far as we can and as long as we can, so that you guys can become the community leaders of your world to then pass that on and hold that door open for your clients and your arts, your fans that you touch. But for you, Andy, what's been a bit of a case study? What's been the similarities or what's been that common theme that you thought, you know what, that is what makes a real application or interview call the one? I think for me, the willingness to um, adapt with the brand, I think, you know, being open to new things. I think that's what makes a strong application. Um, I think as long as you're willing to work with the brand, the brand is willing to work with you. So, you know, it, it's a two-way street and that's what an endorsement is. And, you know, we, we had spoken about, obviously, you know, different paths that artists feel that, you know, you have to be signed. You have to have a million different endorsements already to get an endorsement, but it only takes that one endorsement to put you on the ladder. And like we say, we work with every artist and we work to help the artist progress. So even if you are a bedroom drummer, you know, I, I was in that position and, you know, I was in a position where I wasn't gigging regularly, you know, whenever I joined the, the collision roster, but the team worked with me and, you know, it pushed me as well to be a better drummer and be a better um, musician. So, you know, for me, anybody who's willing to work with the brand and work hard, you know, that that's what we look for within the roster. Yeah. That, that level of focus, that it, it, certainness attention to detail you know having an application that's just polished you know prepared you know it comes back to what you say it's all in the planning right and yeah you know you need to make sure you are standing by yourself in the planning right and just looking after yourself because no one's going to do it better than you you know you are going to put that in and you know i think that that tangible advice you've just given andy is just hopefully going to resonate with the artists at home i really hope you wrote that down and if you need to go back please go back and watch the full video again to just understand better really break down everything that we've talked about in this conversation in the podcast. And when it comes, Andy, to, you know, the things you're most excited about looking forward, you know, within the brand, you know, you as a musician full time, you doing your thing, you know, you really roll with the punches, my friend. What, what is it that you're most excited about when it comes to community, when it comes to collision and when it comes to your drumming? For me, when it comes to the brand itself, you know, I'm really excited to see what the, the next couple of months has in store. Like, obviously, we're working on the, the Collision 1000. And for me, that that's super exciting, you know, for something that I initially took on myself as well with, with the brand that was one of my first projects. You know, it's, it's great to see that coming to life and obviously, you know, getting to talk one-to-one -one with the artists you know it's great to hear their story as I mentioned so for me it's just seeing the level of progression within the brand as well you know seeing these up-and-coming artists and you know just the the community aspect seeing the collision community grow is is really where I I can't wait and 
whenever it comes to obviously my music, you know, just gigging, you know, that that's where it's at for me at the moment. And, you know, just just keep keep the, the ball rolling and, you know, not let um, anything get in the way of that. This man lives to gig. So I hope you all take my advice and really run with it when I say go check out Andy, the jury. You know, you can have a look at Andy's work and Andrew Conroy drums. You know, we'll post the links for the jury as well below. But again, you know, having Andrew on the team with us, you know, is, is truly a blessing. You know, again, very much like minded. I hope, you know, again, I know that's coming across clearly. That's why we just gel so well. It's just we're locked in and we're dialed in. And that's the thing about team. It's it's got to be there. That that synergy, that that alignment, it needs to be where it is. And, and you take to the next level. Andy, I've got to ask Sticks before we uh, let yes. you go. What are you playing? Why do you use them? Go for it. Absolutely. So uh, my preferred collision stick is the 7A Custom. So um, that's always been my go-to stick since I joined the brand. It's always, you know, been reliable, never let me down. Uh, when it comes to the stick bag, though, I, I pretty much have everything that collision has to offer. So, um, you know, I have anything from the 5As to the brushes, the rods, um, you know, I've I've everything two Bs the the whole lot. It, again, it depends on what I'm working on. So, um, for general gigs, it's always going to be the seven A, and then for the quieter acoustic gigs, um, the the rods have been an absolute blessing. So, um, really, really loving the products, and you know, just they they keep me keep me in line, so to do. Eat, sleeps, breathes, collision. You know, again, you bleed it. So I love the fact that you know you've stood by all the products we we play you know exclusively from the start not as just a team member you know i want to make that clear as someone who started by loving the brand continues to love the brand and you know that's just a blessing here it's a pinch me for even me you know and it is it's, it's a really humbling feeling to be able to have a great drummer like andy on on the roster and also part of our team and that's the thing it's drummers working with drummers Right, not suit and ties. Look at us. So we went to no, we went jumpers and we are chill. We are here to help, and we want to work with artists who want to work with us and who want to be supported. That's the thing. And Andy is available. Please feel free to get in with, in touch with Andy at when it comes to his channel, Andrew Conroy Drums. You know, on Instagram. But when it also comes to Collision, anything Collision related. Andrew at collisiondrumsticks.com is going to be Andrew's email for anyone to get in touch with, whether it's endorsement, you know, relations related, whether it's obviously products, getting some advice, having a chat, booking in a 20, 15 minute, time, you know, call with you, Andy. It's not too much to ask, is it? I know we do that every yeah. single day with drummers around the world and you love it. I do. I love it. Absolutely love it. And, you know, like I said, it's always great to, to get any communication from drummers, whether it be endorsement products or, you know, if you're just looking for advice with, when it comes to the brand, you know, I'm here to talk anytime. So, you know, like Carlton said, always reach out to me and I'll be available whenever I can get to you. And we will definitely have that great conversation. Final question, because I know this one is, is really important to me. And it's about our slogan, our statements, you know, the, you know, the impact your sound philosophy and, you know, impact your sound, three really important words, but Andy to you, what does impact your sound define mean? So for me, impact your sound, you know, we, we talk about legacy. So, you know, what sort of impact are you making on your music? What sort of impact are you making on the community? You know, that that's what I look at. And, you know, again, it has two meanings, you know, impact your sound when it comes to your music. You know, obviously, you know, having the right gear, obviously collision is the way to go. But, you know, whenever it comes to community, you know, what's the, the impact that you are making? You know, how are you helping the community further along? And, you know, where where are you going to go you know how are you going to make that impact so again impact is is just that for me is where it's at love that the how how are you going to do it why and and just getting on with it and impacting you know action just making sure you do it love that andy well i hope you've enjoyed our conversation today you know for those of you that have don't forget to subscribe hit us up when it comes to content be the first to know when new videos are released every single week here at collision and again when it comes to the podcast don't forget to subscribe as well to stay focused on when the next podcast drops we're going to let you know we're always going to make sure that you have that knowledge and that insight and then you can obviously just continue to grow fill your cup and uh, take your drum 
coming to the next level. But uh, Andy, thanks so much for joining me. And again, we'll be bringing you back because I know we've got those beautiful snares to talk about, everything drums, artist relations. We're going to have a lot of fun, but I hope to see you soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.